If your working desk is right near your bed, your brain can get confused when you walk into your room in the evening because it won't be sure if it's time to deal with work tasks or to sleep. Hey, I don't even need that much to be confused. Know what I mean? We're visual beings, so our surroundings can prepare us better for tasks we need to do. That's why it's easier to work out somewhere in the park or in the gym rather than in our living room where you tend to relax. If possible, try to keep your bedroom for sleeping and relaxing activities only. That means no computers, work stuff, or TV there. Leave your phone in some other room if possible. Get that old-school alarm clock not to get tempted to scroll the feed. This way, you'll make your brain believe your bedroom is a safe environment and you'll fall asleep faster. When you toss and turn and you stress out about it, it makes your breathing shallow and rapid. Lie on your back and take a deep breath. Then try to understand where the air goes. If you feel your chest is going up, it means your breathing is shallow. Try to direct it into your belly instead of your chest. When you're up, standing, a deep breath is supposed to expand your ribs. But right now, as you're lying on your back, the air naturally goes to the belly. If not, direct it consciously. Try this technique. Breathe out and empty your lungs. Breathe in through your nose for 4 seconds. Your belly is supposed to go up. Hold it like that for 7 seconds. Exhale through your mouth and try to make it last 8 seconds. Repeat that 4 times. Don't mind me, I'll just watch. Make sure to air your room every day and keep it cool, about 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. It might seem too cold at first, but the core temperature of your body will drop before you fall asleep. So if the room is too hot, you might fail to do it. Bats go into a cave when it's time for their daytime sleep to get a dark, quiet, and cool environment. Do the same. Try to get rid of all noises, even with earplugs if necessary, and block out the light. You wake up in the middle of the night and, oh no, 2 a.m. Why is this happening to you again? Some people immediately fall back to sleep if they wake up in the middle of the night. If you wake up in the too early a.m. hours and can't get back to sleep, don't stare at your clock. You'll only end up stressed out. Better turn its face away from you. Get up and do something. Don't scroll your phone or do any challenging mental work because it will awaken your brain even more. Try some calming activity, like reading a book, and don't let the light in your room be too strong. The same thing works when you're going to bed in the first place. It's essential to be consistent and try to go to sleep at approximately the same time every night. But if you can't fall asleep and just roll in your bed, you'll only get frustrated. If you're not asleep after 20 minutes of trying, go for some relaxing activities. Daily habits affect your sleep. If you spend your whole day working, and after that, you scroll your social media feed for hours, your body won't get a chance to get tired properly. And your brain is more likely to stay awake because of too much information it receives during the day. Try to go out for a walk. Spend some time outside to get fresh air. Some people can't fall asleep if they have too much coffee in the morning, so you should probably ditch it or simply not have it in the afternoon. If you exercise on a daily basis, at least some light 15-minute workout for days when you don't feel like doing anything, you're more likely to fall asleep faster at night. One study showed that regular workouts almost cut in half the amount of time people needed to fall asleep, which gave them extra 40 minutes of sleep. There's one rule only. Try not to exercise too late in the evening, unless it's yoga, stretching, or something relaxing that can improve the quality of your sleep. Screen time is one of the biggest problems because we spend so much time on our phones or gadgets. Try to avoid it for at least an hour or two before you go to bed. Our body operates in a cycle called the circadian rhythm. It's sort of our own internal clock that tells us what time it is. Doesn't necessarily match with what we see on the regular clock, and send signals it's time to sleep. Those signals are based on things from our environment, such as noise and light. It used to be relatively easy to block the light. You only draw curtains and voila, you're in a dark room. But phones and technology have messed it up. Your phone emits blue light, which suppresses your melatonin. That's the hormone that tells your body it's time to sleep. If you're using your phone, lower the screen brightness and try out a night setting that will filter out blue light. The amount of light we see is an important factor for our body to know when to go to bed. 
you open curtains in the morning and let the daylight in the room, so your body knows it's time to wake up and start a new day. If you can't imagine a day without a good nap, at least try to do it as early as possible. Turn on the alarm to avoid situations where you sleep 3 hours on your couch and end up not sleeping at all later. Keep it to 20 minutes long and before 3 p.m. If you're going for a burger, french fries, or a pepperoni pizza at 11 p.m., don't be surprised if you'll struggle with sleeping for a very long time. Finish your dinner a couple of hours before you go to sleep. If you're hungry before going to bed, eat something light. Avoid heavy foods that will keep your body awake. Even if you manage to fall asleep, your body won't rest properly. It'll have to work hard to digest all that food. Also, when you hit the bed right after big meals, your body doesn't get enough time to burn off all those calories. So yeah, it's better to stay up after big meals, even if it's just an afternoon nap. Press the relaxing point located on the outer wrist, below your palm, in line with your pinky finger. You'll find the small hollow space there. Massage it in up and down or circular motion for 2-3 to three minutes. Do it for both hands. There's also a spot on your leg that will help you relax your body before sleep, too. Look for the highest point on your ankle. Now measure four finger widths above the ankle. Press the spot that's behind your largest lower leg bone. Massage it in up and down or a circular motion for a couple of seconds. Now, it sounds weird, but you never know. It might even work. Tell yourself to stay awake. The same as your body refuses to fall asleep when you order it, maybe it rebels here, too. Visualize a nice, calm place. A sandy beach, coconuts, palms, sun on your skin, crystal clear sea, no one around except for people you care about. Engage your imagination and create a perfect scenario that will relax your body. Take a relaxing shower and bath. When you don't expect any special activities and want your body to relax, it's better to shower in warm water. Bathe your feet in hot water. That can also improve your sleep. Some people say they get a better sleep when staying in a hotel. Maybe you do all the right things, but your mattress and pillow aren't suitable for you. It's recommended to upgrade your bedding every 5 to 8 years, at least. It's probably going to be expensive, but you can't put a price on good sleep. Riding is another calming activity that can help you get better sleep. When you're in bed, you often go through things that stress you out during the day and even something you need to do the next day. Make a list of things that bother you. Write one more list with some positive things that happen during the day so your brain can eventually focus on positive events. Nighty-night!